Hello everyone, so in today's video we'll be talking about how to properly design an unregulated power supply. Okay. Um, this was going to be part of the headphone amplifier series, but I decided to uh, make a standalone video. Since this, this subject and the way that I'm going to be uh, uh, approaching it is extremely uh, generic and extremely useful for whatever kind of project that you want, that you'll need uh, uh, to be powered from mains. Okay. And that you want a linear uh, uh, supply like this. Okay, this is no switch mode. Okay, <laughs> um, so it's going to be a lot more useful that way. But we will be using the headphone amplifier as an example for all, all of our calculations, just so that we have uh, something to uh, to uh, uh, exemplify this. All right. So this is your uh, typical. Uh, block diagram for an unregulated supply. You have your line voltage or mains. Okay, you usually pass it through some filtering or uh, uh, protection. Uh, then you go through an isolation transformer, a rectifying stage, and some filtering to smooth out the um, the peaks that you get from the rectifier. Okay. So let's take a look at each one of these steps and how do you uh, properly design a supply like this. Okay. So in order to design a power supply like this, um, first of all, this is just the, the, uh, the overview of the, of the process. Okay. The first thing that you need to know is your load specifications. Okay. You, before you start designing your power supply, you got to have your full, your, uh, the circuit that it's going to be powering all done already. Okay. Because this is going to determine the, to determine everything that you have after that. Okay, so like the first step will be to uh, calculate the value of the filter capacitor for uh, uh, the voltage ripple that you want at the output. You then go to the transformer, then you go to your uh, rectifier, choose a rectifier, then you go back to your filter capacitor. We'll see more about that later. Then you actually pick the, your uh, your capacitor, not just the capacitance value. And then in the end, you do some uh, uh, filtering and some protection, and then you have your finished supply. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at how to pick your transformer, which is the main part of your supply, and it is what is going to um, impose all of the limitations, your voltages, your currents, and everything. Okay, so the first step that we need that we need to take. Is we need to determine our load specifications. In this case, this is the regulator that uh, will be powering the amplifier. Now, since uh, this is a shunt regulator, we already have um, uh, a, a very good uh, estimation of our voltages and currents from here. Uh, first of all, like this current, it's, uh, it's wrong. The actual current that we want is around 120 milliamps. This was just for the uh, prototype. So we have a current of 120 milliamps and we want the output here to be at around uh, 12 volts. Okay, so let's begin by uh, writing this down. Okay, so our voltage is at 12 volts and our current is going to be at around uh, 120 milliamps. Okay, by the way, all of these uh, sheets of paper with the, the whole uh, design process will be available. I'll make a uh, download link so that you can uh, download this. They'll be in the, uh, in the uh, video description below. Okay. I'll provide both the um, Visio files that I've uh, created to, to do this. And I will also provide a, a PDF so that you don't have, you don't need Visio to uh, open it up. So you can just um, print it out or just uh, use it as a reference. Okay. Now, the second thing that we need to do is calculate the value of our filter capacitor, because this regulator has uh, a limitation in the amount of a ripple that it can reject here in the output. In this case, so this regulator was a uh, pretty re well designed, so it doesn't uh, um, have it has a, a very high uh, ripple rejection. Okay, but let's say that I want, for example, our ripple voltage to be uh, around, uh, let's say, 0 0.5 volts of ripple. Okay. Now, the other thing that we need to uh, know 
in order to calculate the capacitor is the frequency of the ripple. In this case, the frequency of the ripple, since it is um, uh, full wave uh, rectified, will always be double the frequency of your uh, incoming signal, of your, uh, of your mains. I'm here in Europe, so here we have a 50 uh, hertz frequency. In this case, the ripple will be at 100 hertz, so double that. If you didn't have, if you had a, a half wave uh, rectification stage, which is just, there is no reason to do that, this would be actually your uh, mains frequency, okay? And the load in this case is just this uh, uh, 120 milliamps. So let's just put this into the uh, formula here. So you have this, oh, sorry about that. Uh, so 100 times your 0 0.5 volts of ripple. And this is going to give us, if you put this on calculator, around a 2,400 microfarad capacitor, okay? This is not a standard value. Uh, you choose your, your uh, most approximate value to this. In this case, you could, you could go with a uh, um, 2,200 microfarad capacitor, which would be uh, more than enough for a regulated supply like the one that we ha are going to be uh, uh, powering this with. But since uh, I can, I'm just going to put a, a 2,700, maybe a, a 3,300 uh, microfarad capacitor, okay? So that's the minimum that we want. This, oh, by the way, all these calculations have already some margin in them. So, yeah. Then, after we do that, we need to determine the uh, secondary voltage and current. Okay? The way to do that is very simple. Before you can calculate the current, you need to know if you want, if you have a center tap transformer, so that's uh, already the first uh, the, uh, step we need to take to select the transformer would be if we have a transformer with a center tap or if we will have just a, uh, uh, a regular secondary without the center tap. In my case, uh, as we will so see uh, very soon, uh, I'll choose a transformer with uh, two secondaries and they're not center tap. So I'll have to go for a, a full wave bridge rectification. Now, this is very simple, okay? So if you had a center tap transformer, uh, the uh, current, the actual current in the secondary of your transformer, the RMS current, uh, remember that uh, just because your load is going to be taking uh, 120 milliamps, that's the DC current, that's not the actual load that will be presented uh, to the transformer. The RMS load is a, lo uh, is a little bit higher because of the way the rectification filtering stage works. Um, the, 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 your capacitor and your load will only draw current at the peak of the sine wave. Okay? So you gotta be mindful of that. That's why your secondary current is always higher than your load. That's, that's a, a rookie mistake that a lot of people do. I did back in the day when I, was, uh, when I had no clue about this sort of stuff. And uh, a fairly <laughs> common thing to do. So the thing is, if you have a center tap transformer, all you need to do is just multiply your load by 1.2. Uh, in this case, of the uh, 120 milliamps, this would give us around 150 milliamps of uh, secondary current, RMS. But since I'm going to be using a full wave uh, bridge rectifier, we need to multiply the load current by uh, 1.8, by a factor of 1.8, this will give us around uh, 220 uh, milliamps, okay? So, we already know the uh, current at the secondary. Now, we need to determine the voltage that we want in the secondary. In order to determine the secondary voltage, we need to work backwards, okay? So, we'll first start with the... Uh, our regulated voltage or the unregulated, if this was going to be powering, let's say, a, a class AB power amplifier or something like that, that wouldn't have a regulator, then you just uh, plug here the value of your uh, unregulated voltage that you want. In this case, we have a regulator and the output of the regulator is going to be at uh, 12 volts, okay? Then, if you had an unregulated supply here, you just ignore this step, but in this case, we have a regulator for voltage. Um, in the case of this regulator that we've designed in the previous video, this is going to be at around one volt of a uh, forward voltage. So um, 
our supply for the regulator needs to be at at least 13 volts for it to actually regulate. If it's below that, it stops regulating. Okay. This, by the way, if you are using a uh, off-the-shelf regulator, like let's say an LM317, 8712, uh, or something like that, you can just go to the data sheet, and there it will say the uh, your minimum input voltage for it to uh, keep regulation. Okay, that's the value that you're putting here. Then the allowed uh, voltage ripple. In this case, we've chosen uh, 0.5, so 0.5 volts. Okay. Then your rectifier forward voltage. If you go for a full wave center tapped uh, design, then this forward voltage is just going to be the forward voltage of one diode because of the way that uh, the rectification works. But since we are going to be using a full wave radio rectifier, the rectifier forward voltage will be double the forward voltage of a single diode. Uh, in our case, I've decided to go with a uh, uh, 1N5818. Uh, and uh, if you look here in the data sheet, uh, where it is, here you go, forward voltage drop. In this case, it's quoted at uh, 1 amp. We're not going to be anywhere close to this. So the actual value in the, in the real circuit will be a bit less, but this is a, a good uh, estimation. So this here says that it is around uh, 500 millivolts of drop. So two times uh, 500 millivolts, we have one volt drop across our rectifier stage. And uh, after all that, all we have to do is uh, sum all of these up. So in this case, all of these would give us around 14.5 volts. Okay. Then this is just DC. Okay, let me just put it in here, DC. Now to get the R mass voltage of uh, of the, uh, our RMS voltage for the uh, transformer, since it's AC, what we need to do is we need to uh, divide this by the square root of two, because since this is the our peak voltage, okay? And if you do that, you will notice that it is around a 10.25 volts AC, okay? So we need a transformer of at least 10.25 volts. You can, you, uh, in this case, you could pick a 10 volt transform, but then you'd be just right on the verge of what you can uh, uh, operate it at. So that's not good. You always need to uh, uh, have some margin because this usually, like for example, if you get a 10 volt transformer, the biggest problem is that that's quoted with a line voltage of, let's say, in this case, uh, Europe at uh, around uh, 220 volts. Okay. But you can have a 10% variation on that line voltage. So if your voltage, if your input voltage dips, let's say to what, 200 volts, it won't be able to maintain that 10 volts RMS. It will drop as well. So then this could uh, start becoming a problem. That way, the, uh, the next value, uh, next standard value for a transformer, in this case, is going to be 12 volts. So we would choose a, a 12 volt transformer. Now that we've picked, the uh, voltage of our transformer. What we need to know is the actual um, uh, VA rating, the uh, power rating of the transformer. In this case, it's very simple. All you need to do is to multiply this uh, 12 volts by the current that we've set in here. In this case, it's going to be a 12 volts times the uh, 220 milliamps. And that's, in that case, it's going to give us a, a, a VA of around 2.7. There isn't a, a, a 2.7 VA transformer out there, so we're going to be using a 12 volt at 3 VA transformer. Okay, that's a, a fairly uh, uh, standard value for a transformer. Okay, so then you go around and you uh, select one from your supplier. In this case, this is what I've chosen it's from uh, uh, for an L. The, uh, since this is an audio project, uh, I went with a uh, toroidal transformer in this case, but you can use an, an, uh, an EI core transformer. That's up to your preference and what you have available. And uh, I could have gone with a uh, uh, 3.2 VA, but this transformer that I've picked is just for one channel. I'm going to be doing dual mono in this case, so there will be two power supplies like this, so I need to double everything. 
Now, I could have gone with two transformers, each one with 3VA, but all of these transformers that uh, Forno uh, provides, they have uh, two secondaries. So instead of having your regular transformer like this, this is your regular transformer, okay? What they do is they give you a transformer that is like this, so that you have two secondaries, okay? So, since we had, if we needed a 3VA, in this case, I'm going to go with the 7VA transformer, okay? That way, it's a, it's a lot simpler, and then I can use a, each one of these uh, um, taps here, these two secondaries, to power the two different voltage regulators and have the two uh, separated power supplies, okay? So in the end, we'll be using a 12 volts 7VA transformer. Now, we've selected our transformer, then the next step is to choose our rectifier and filter capacitor. Now, in order to do that, the first thing that you gotta do is to determine the fully loaded voltage and the unloaded voltage of your transformer. Because uh, a lot of people know, but uh, the voltage at the output of the transformer, the secondary changes with its load, okay? So the loaded voltage is usually, well, most of the time, your rated voltage. So if the transformer, say that it is a 12 volt transformer, that is the fully loaded voltage that you get. So you get 12 volts with a fully loaded transformer. Okay. But remember that that's uh, the fully loaded voltage with a resistive load, not a uh, rectifying stage and stuff like that. It can change because of the way that the, the rectifier pulls current from it, but okay. this is a good uh, uh, simplification. Okay, so 12 volts. Now, the open voltage is a bit different. It's a bit different. You get your data sheet here, and then you, load, uh, you look at the regulation percentage. Okay. By the way, this is sort of a uh, luxury. When I, I come from Brazil, I'm living in Portugal now, but in Brazil, this sort of stuff, having an actual data sheet for a transformer is literally a luxury. You usually just went to your local supply, uh, electronic supply store and just picked a transformer, that, the only transformer that they had in the uh, uh, configuration that you wanted. And of course, it had absolutely no data sheet. But uh, if you want to know this beforehand, it's very simple. Just spec your transformer as we did in the, uh, in the previous section and look for transformers online from your uh, distributors, you know, like DigiKey, Farnell, and, uh, Element 14, RS components and stuff like that. And search for transformers that match the transformer that you want in your, uh, that you have in your local uh, store. Let's say they have an EI transformer at uh, 12 volts with uh, uh, seven, uh, a VA rating, then just go online and you search for something that matches that and look at their regulation, uh, their regulation percentage, and that's usually going to be the same that the, uh, that the one that you buy from the store. Just make sure that if you're buying a toroidal, then hey, check for toroids and so on. If you have, a, if you're going to be buying at your local supply store a, uh, an EI core one, then Look for an EI core one with the specification that you want, and that's going to be uh, good enough for an approximation for this. In this case, the uh, regulation is going to be at uh, 16%, uh, not 16, sorry, 19%. So the way that we calculate that is our uh, open circuit voltage will be the rated voltage, the loaded voltage, times uh, that, uh, that uh, regulation percent. In this case, you just need to multiply it by uh, 1.19, okay, because it's uh, basically you want the open circuit, so it's 119% the value of your loaded voltage. And in this case, it's going to give us uh, around 13.45 uh, volts. Okay, then what you need to do is you plug this value into this formula right here to get your peak voltage. Okay, so this is RMS voltage, and we need to get the uh, uh, peak voltage because that's going to, well, it's going to be rectified. In this case, if you multiply it by its square root of two, you get around 19 volts. Okay, so when the transformer is uh, uh, unloaded, by the way, this is going to give us uh, a, a voltage peak of around 17 volts. Okay, DC, so keep that in mind. So 
Uh, when the transformer is actually loaded, you have an output at your uh, after the rectifier of around 17 volts, and in the case a peak, okay, the peak voltage. And when it's fully unloaded, if you've disconnected the circuit that it was powering, you get 19 volts. So you need to, uh, uh, the, the bigger the voltage that you have in your secondary, the bigger the discrepancy between these two values. So you need to keep that in mind, especially when you are choosing a uh, filter capacitor. Okay, so we've determined the, uh, the voltages that we'll be working with. In this case, since whenever you are designing something like this, you need to put margin in everything. We'll always work with the open circuit voltage, okay? Just to be safe. Now, the, the next step is to determine the current and voltage requirements that will be needed for our rectifying stage. Again, first of all, the voltage, which is the simplest one. Then you have, again, to choose between the center tap and the bridge rectifier. If you had a center tap, then your uh, peak reverse voltage, when you uh, are looking for a data sheet like this for a, uh, a diode, this is usually VRRM. Here you go. The rep repetitive peak reverse voltage. Since this is a Schottky diode, this, these values are a bit low. If this was a regular silicon diode, then these values would be a lot higher. Okay, so uh, that's just the reverse voltage that the diode can uh, withstand without uh, conducting. If it was a center tapped design, we have to double the peak voltage that we have here. So in this case, it would be uh, around 38 volts. But since we are doing a, a full bridge rectifier, then your reverse voltage is just going to be the peak, so 19 volts, okay. Now for the current, oh, sorry, 19 volts. Now for the current, uh, this is going to be the ripple current that will be passing through your diode. Um, this is going to be uh, also used to uh, calculate the ripple current that our, cap our capacitor needs to uh, withstand. So in this case, you, you need to look for the IF in your uh, diode data sheet. And it's just your DC load uh, current times 2.5. In our case, we had um, 120 milliamp load. So it would be uh, around 200 and 40 milliamps, but just so that we have some margin, let's say this is going to be at around uh, 300 milliamps, okay? So we need to pick a, um, a diode, a rectifier, that can withstand a reverse voltage of at least 19 volts and a current of 300 milliamps. I've already chosen this. I went with a, a Schottky diode because of their uh, lower, volta lower voltage drop. Since this is a, a, a very low voltage type of circuit, everything that you can minimize in terms of voltage drop, the better. So I went with a Schottky. If this was just, let's say, a power amplifier with the plus and minus 50 volts rails, I will just go with a regular silicon diode because that would, be, uh, that would give the circuit a bit more ruggedness. But in this case, we went with the Schottky for the uh, uh, voltage requirements. And here, if you see the forward voltage, it's uh, around uh, uh, 0 0.5, okay, as we've seen previously. And we could use, for example, M1N 5817, because it can handle a reverse voltage of around 20 volts. But that's way too close to its, uh, um, to its specification. And these, remember, they are the absolute maximum ratings, okay? And you shouldn't be going nowhere near those values. So in this case, instead of going with a, uh, a, a, the 1N5117, we went with the uh, uh, one up from there. It was the 1N5818, which can handle up to 30 volts. In this case, even if our uh, line voltage uh, rises to, let's say, 240 volts, this won't be a problem because this is just going to uh, rise to, let's say, 21 volts. Uh, and then if uh, uh, goes to uh, 21 volts, by the way, that uh, first uh, pick would just not work. But it's well within the margin of the 1N5118. If we're going to be using a, a center tap design, 
this wouldn't be uh, this line of uh, diodes wouldn't be uh, suitable for it because the higher it goes is to uh, 40 volts and it's way too close to this uh, 38 volt limit here. Remember that if your line voltage uh, goes up to let's say uh, 240 volts, then this voltage here would climb uh, around 10%, which would give you around, <laughs> let's say a 21, which would be 42 volts here, which would uh, surpass that absolute rating here. So we went with the 1N4158. Eighteen, okay. And this can handle uh, thirty volts at one amp. Oh, by the way, forget about that. You need to uh, get a rectifier that is uh, capable of sustaining at least uh, that uh, three hundred milliamps. And in this case, this is more than capable at one amp. So there we go. We've already picked our uh, rectifier. This was a uh, power. Uh, uh, amplifier and this was the uh, supply for it. I've chosen a one of uh, those uh, bridge rectifiers, the one that already comes pre-made, not uh, doing it with uh, discrete diodes, because in that case anything that uh, will be dissipating quite a lot of uh, power in the rectifying stage, you just want something that you can easily heat sink and those uh, uh, modules you can just uh, drive a uh, bolt through them and uh, uh, attach them to a heat sink a lot easier than you can with a, a regular diodes like this okay so this is a low power design then discrete diodes is uh, more than uh, uh, enough for it so keep that in mind and then we've selected the rectifier all that's uh, left for us to do is select our filter capacitor in this case we need a capacitor which can withstand at least uh, 19 volts and we need a capacitor that is able to handle a ripple current of at least uh, 300 milliamps and it should be a capacitor of at least, uh, where was it? Uh, 2,400 microfarad, okay. So let's uh, uh, do this, the voltage, it's uh, more than 19 volts. You should never put a capacitor, let's say, at uh, 20 volts, the same thing that we did with the uh, uh, rectifier. You always need some margin there. In this case, let's say I would put a, uh, a uh, uh, you can put a 24, a 20, not 24, a 25 volt capacitor. Uh, I would go a little bit higher to a, a 30 volt or a 35 volt capacitor in this case, just for longevity. Uh, the more you stay away from those uh, uh, the rating of a component, the more it's going to last. But in this case, a, a 25 volt capacitor will handle this quite well. And it should handle a ripple current of at least 300 milliamps. Okay. Uh, ripple current is something that a lot of people don't uh, think about, but it can really destroy a capacitor if your ripple current, if your capacitor is not uh, rated for that uh, your desired ripple current. In this case, a capacitor of a let's say 2700 microfarad at 25 volts will have a ripple current of a lot more than this, usually in the range of. Uh, uh, 1 amp to 2 amps. With it to uh, discover this value, just need to go to the data sheet of your uh, uh, capacitor. Just look at the capacitor, see which series uh, of capacitor you've got. Go to the uh, manufacturer's website, download the data sheet, and uh, look there uh, for this sort of information. Uh, this will uh, make the capacitor run cooler. Uh, so that it doesn't have, because every capacitor has some uh, internal resistance and a whole bunch of uh, uh, nonlinearities inside and parasitic stuff. And if you exceed the ripple current of the capacitor, you are basically just slowly damaging it over time. Just keep that in mind. Choose a capacitor with a ripple current greater than what we have designed in here. And with that, we have our transformer selected. We've also selected our rectifier and we have selected our capacitor, filter capacitor. So the, the grunt of the power supply, the, 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 the things that actually um, make it work, we've selected them all. So the next step will be to do some uh, protection and filtering, okay? Oh, by the way, uh, most of the, the formulas that I have shown here and in the, uh, in the previous slide, uh, most of them come from the uh, 
National Semiconductor Voltage Regulator Handbook. Unfortunately, my copy of it is in Brazil. <laughs> I didn't uh, bring it here. But in section eight, you have power supply design. And in here, you get a lot of information, okay? So I, I highly suggest you to take a look at this. They really explain in uh, great detail uh, most of the stuff that I've been uh, uh, showing here. So yeah, that's just a, a, a quick tip. I'll put a, a link to this, uh, the PDF for this uh, uh, handbook in the video description. So if you want it, just check it out there, okay? So now let's design the protection and the filtering stage of the uh, power supply. One thing that's very important, in my opinion, uh, every uh, power supply that's connected to the mains should have at least, like the bare minimum, a fuse to protect it and an MOV, MOV, okay, metal oxide resistor to um, prevent any voltage spikes, for example, when the, uh, um, your, your utility company has a brownout and the, um, and the power comes back, it can have a spike. And usually there is also like some spikes in Brazil. I lived uh, very near to a, uh, a very big industrial complex and I could literally see in the, uh, in the mains voltage that came to the house whenever they, uh, uh, for example, turned on a big motor or something like that because you you'd see a spike in the uh, line voltage also the elevator if someone was using the elevator you could clearly see the spike when the uh, motor was stunning on on or off so having an mov is just a really good precaution okay so the bare minimum just put a uh, a, a fuse and an mov if you can if you can get an mov it's okay but it's uh, um, highly recommended now the first step to uh, determine what we want in our circuit will be two things. First of all, you need to determine if you want some EMI filtering. This is not really um, a requirement for a uh, transformer-based supply like the one that we are designing here. Because the transformer, will, uh, most of the uh, EMI, it will filter out on itself and it also won't uh, uh, create a lot of interference. So any EMI filter is optional. It's okay if, if you can put it there. Hey, just put it. But uh, especially in this case, it's an audio project. I'll see if I have space in the enclosure. I'll put one in, and uh, maybe I can I can do a video in the future. If someone is interesting, just is interested in that. I can make an a, a an episode in the headphone amplifier series of uh, how to design an EMI filter for a, uh, our kind of supply here. But if you're going to be using a switch mode supply, this is almost required, okay? If you need to pass any sort of a certification, and this is really required. But it's also just good to have, just so that you don't pollute your environment with a lot of EMI. And then you need to determine if you want to have a soft start circuit. This is also optional. Since our design, it's extremely low power for, uh, well, well, regarding how, uh, usually uh, amplifiers go. We don't need a soft start, start circuit. This is just to uh, prevent uh, large amounts of uh, inrush current. But if you had an amplifier that had a, uh, a pretty high uh, power rating, say like uh, 200 watts, 100 watts, then you should uh, consider a, a soft start circuit. So in this case, we're not going to be we're probably not going to be doing any EMI filtering and we also won't have a soft start circuit. So all that we have to do is calculate our primary uh, current. To do that, you just get the uh, power of the uh, transformer. In this case, we've chosen a 7VA. So our current is going to be 7 divided by our primary voltage. In this case, let's say uh, 220 volts. In a that would give us a current of around uh, 32 milliamps. Okay. So, in the supply, in the, the primary of the transformer, we'll be drawing around 32 milliamps from the mains. Okay. Then you have to uh, estimate your inrush current. This is usually in the order of uh, 10 to 15, sometimes 20 times this uh, uh, your steady state current. So let's put the uh, worst case scenario. Let's go for um, 20 times. Uh, if we multiply this by 20, you get 
around like 600 milliamps of a merge card. This is not enough to uh, uh, trip a circuit breaker, so that's how we. Uh, that's why we are we're not be going to be using a soft start circuit. But if this was, let's say, uh, four amps of uh, inrush current, then I would consider putting a uh, soft start circuit. And if you put a soft start circuit, then you got to choose a uh, fast acting fuse. Okay, your regular fuse that you see everywhere. But since we're not going to be using a soft start circuit and we're going to be using a toroidal transformer, which has a higher than normal inrush current, then we'll need a slow blow fuse. And the thing about the slow blow fuse is that it will, let's say, withstand that uh, if it was rated to that uh, 32 milliamps, it would withstand that uh, for a long period of time. But if there was, let's say, a spike of, in this case, let's say, uh, 300 milliamps, it wouldn't blow which a fast-acting uh, fast fuse would. The slow blow, if you just have a peak current and then just uh, averages out, it doesn't blow. But if you, let's say, put a 50 milliamp load through a 30 milliamp uh, slow blow fuse, then it would blow, because then it would, let's say, <laughs> be at uh, that current for around like 300, maybe 500 uh, milliseconds, and that's enough for it to blow, okay? So if you don't go with soft start circuit, you always should put a slow blow fuse. Uh, so this is the one that we are going to be using, the slow blow. And to determine your uh, the current rating of the fuse, uh, all you have to do is to uh, specify, at least this is usually the value that you uh, get on uh, uh, app notes from uh, various fuse manufacturers, you should always have a margin of around 25%. So in order to get that 25% uh, margin, you just get your uh, primary current, in this case, 32 milliamps, and you divide it by uh, 75%, okay? That, that way you get uh, that 1.25% uh, value. So in this case, we'll need a fuse of, let's say, around uh, 50 milliamps, okay? So our appropriate fuse would be a T for a time delay fuse of 50 milliamps with a uh, voltage rating of at least, let's say, 250 volts, because that's the uh, line voltage here in Europe. So that's the fuse that we want to, um, to uh, specify in our product. That's the one that we are going to be using, okay? So it's a slow blow. 50 milliamp fuse, which is rated for our line voltage. If this was, if this had a soft start circuit and you put a, a fast acting one, this would be an F 50 milliamp, okay? So keep that in mind. And then the last step, we've already uh, done uh, all of the really uh, extremely required stuff for our power supply. The only thing left will be to select an appropriate uh, MOV, the metal oxide resistor, and for that, I won't be uh, uh, discussing it here. There is this excellent uh, app node by Little Fuse, which, by the way, the link will be in the description of the video as well. It's a uh, AN9771.1. And this app node, it's just perfect. Since this is such an important protection component, um, you should really just you, uh, specify it correctly. And here you just get everything, all the information that you need. This is what I always use when I'm uh, specifying any sort of uh, mod for any sort of application. It can look a bit daunting, but it is very simple. Okay, just read the text and you get there, okay? So after you read all that, you'll have a, 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 the appropriate mod for your circuit and your whole power supply is done. Okay, we went literally through all the steps that we had in here. It wasn't anything difficult. There were a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, beginner mistakes that someone can do. It's uh, pretty common. But after you've uh, uh, internalized this uh, process of how to design it, it's very simple. And you can do it for any project of your own. Okay, so yeah, uh, that was it. I hope this was a, a very uh, informative video and you learned a lot from it. Um, this is a very uh, simple topic, but it is a topic that is uh, most of the times overlooked. And uh, so that's why I decided to uh, uh, shine some light on it. So yeah, 
<laughs> this was it. If you have any questions about this subject or any other subjects of the other videos, um, leave a comment below. If you have any suggestions, anything that you'd like to see, some sort of topic that um, I should cover next, hey, same thing, just leave the feedback in the comments below. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> it was a, a lot of fun to do, to make. And uh, all of this uh, information here, all of these uh, slides and sheets of paper that you can use for reference, I will have a, a download link below. So check that out. Now, yeah, this was it. And I uh, hope you see you in the next one. Okay, bye.